All right, I'm back again. I'm going to read a few Psalms. Let's read Psalm 11. In the Lord put out my trust. How say you to my soul, flee as a bird to your mountain? For lo, the wicked bend their bow. They make ready their arrow upon the string that they might privilege shoot at the upright in heart. If the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold the eyelids. Try the children of men. The Lord tried the righteous, but the wicked in him that love of violence, his soul hateth. What he said, the Lord trieth the righteous. In Job's case, he let Satan try him. Upon the wicked he shall rain snares, fire, and brimstone, and horrible tempest. This shall be the portion of their cup. For the righteous Lord loveth righteousness. His countenance doth behold the upright. Let's read another one. Psalm 12. Help, Lord, for the godly man ceaseth, for the faithful fell from among the children of men. They speak badly, everyone, with his neighbor. Mm -hmm. With flattering words and with a double heart do they speak. The Lord shall cut off all flattering lips and the tongue that speak of proud things. Who have said, with our tongue we will prevail? Our lips are our own. Who is Lord over us? For the oppression of the poor, for the sighing of the needy, now will I arise, said the Lord. I will set him in safety from him that puffeth at him. The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace, of earth purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord, thou shalt preserve them from his generation forever. The wicked walk on every side when the vilest men are exalted. Psalm 13. How long wilt thou forget me, O Lord? Forever? How long wilt thou hide thy face from me? How long shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my heart daily? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? Consider and hear me, O Lord, my God. Lighten my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Lest my enemy say I have prevailed against him. And those that trouble me rejoice when I am moved. But I have trusted in thy mercy. My heart shall rejoice in thy salvation. I will sing to the Lord because he hath dealt bountifully with me. Wow. Now let's go to Job again. Let's go to Job again. Let's go to the end. It's kind of weird, weird that Psalms happen right after Job. So after all the stuff that was happening with Job, then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that thou canst do everything, and that no thought can be withholden from thee. Who is he that hideth counsel without knowledge? Therefore have I uttered that I understood not. Things too wonderful for me, which I knew not. You see, he wanted an audience with God, and God gave him an audience. But he didn't answer none of his questions. He just talked about things he don't understand. Get what Job is saying? Here I beseech thee, and I will speak. I will demand of thee, and declare thou unto me. I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now my eye see of thee. Wherefore I bore myself and repent in dust and ashes. He repented of all that he said. And it was so that after the Lord had spoken these words unto Job, the Lord said to Eliphaz, the Temanite, My wrath is kindled against thee, and against thy two friends, for you have not spoken to me the thing that is right as my servant Job hath. Therefore I take unto you seven rams, seven, seven bullocks, and seven rams, and go to my servant Job, and offer up yourselves a burnt offering, and my servant Job shall pray for you, for him will I accept, lest I deal with you after your folly, and that you have spoken of me, not of me, the thing that is which is right, like my servant Job has. You see, Job was righteous. God even understood everything that Job was going through, but he's like, y'all just weren't right. Go to Job. You know, a lot of times in your life, People are going to return to you. You understand? People are going to return to you. People are going to return to you because of your righteousness. And guess what you're going to do? Pray for them. So Eliphaz the Temanite and Bildad the Shuite and Zophar the Namatite went and did according to as the Lord commanded them. The Lord also accepted Job. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Also the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Wow. Then came there unto him all his brethren, and all his sisters, and all they that had been acquainted before, and did eat bread with him in his house, and they bemoaned him, and comforted him. That's why he said, say not the, the former days are better than the days now, because you don't require wisely concerning this. You don't know what the end result going to be of anything, but if you keep faith and you have hope, look what happened. Everybody came back around. Sometimes you're going to have season when God distanced you from everybody and all your family members and all your so-called friends. He'll do that. You understand? Then he'll bring them back. Wow. 
And every also gave every also man also gave him a piece of money and every one an earring of gold. So the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning. For he had fourteen thousand sheep and six thousand camels and a thousand yoke of oxen and a thousand she asses. He also had seven sons and three daughters. And he called the name of the first Jemima, and the name of the second Keza, and the name of the third Karen Hepak. And in all the land were no women found as so as far as the daughters of Job. And their father gave them an inheritance among their brethren. After this, Job lived an hundred and forty years, and saw his sons and his sons' sons, even four generations. So Job died being old and full of days. That's just Job. You see, we see these, we see older people, right? And they got a nice house and they're doing this, but we don't know what they've been through. And if you ever get the time to talk to some elders, they'll be like, yeah, I went through, they'll tell you, we went through seasons of drought. You understand? People, we look at them, we're like, oh, man, I just want to get there. Well, you know what you got to do? If you're going to get there, you're going to go through some things, people. It ain't a person in this world that ain't went through nothing, especially Christians. We all have our Job moments. We all have those moments when people distance themselves from us. We all have those moments when people we think don't be there, ain't there. Let's go to uh, Revelation. You understand? It's something I said. Revelation chapter 3, chapter 7. And to the angel of the church of Philadelphia write these things, said he that is holy. He that is true, he that hath the key of David. He that openeth and no man shutteth, and shutteth and no man openeth. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. But thou hast a little strength, and has kept my word, and has not denied my name. Think about Job. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews, and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet. Think about Job. And to know that I have loved thee, because thou hast kept the word of my patience. I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the earth, to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Him that overcometh will I make a pill in the temple of my God. And he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which come up, cometh down out of heaven from my God. And I will write upon him my new name. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the church. What he said? I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. Hmm. Think about Joel's friends. His patience. You have a little strength left. Right when Job probably felt he couldn't take no more. Along come the Lord. And blessed him. He said if you. He, if you faint in. During tribulations and trials. What kind of. You, what, your strength is weak. You see. A lot of people. A lot of Christians can. Say they're Christians when they don't go through nothing. But how many of you. And still call on God when everything is going to hell and high water around you. You know when most people lose their faith? When things are going crazy around them. They're like, where is God? Where is he? And they turn from him. And they let the devil win. So they never reach that next stage. They stop. You know, a lot of people, I'm telling you, man, people love God when everything is going right for them. But how many of you actually been through some things and love God when things are going wrong? Still call upon him. Steady talk to him. Steady commune with him. Steady give him the honor and praise during hard times. You see, you remember in the story when the, the apostles were beat down and thrust stone and then thrust out. And they went to the other disciples and be like, hey, man. Glory be to God. You were surprised what we went through, boy. We got beat down. We got stoned. And God did all this and that. They didn't care. They knew the word of God was being fulfilled in their lives. The righteous shall suffer. You will be hated by mankind for my name's sake. Think about Job's story. Job is like one of the first stories of a true Christian. They say he prayed every day for his kids. He offered up sacrifices for his children. You, you also see even praying for your children can't necessarily protect them from certain things because people have to learn to pray for themselves you see there's a lot of family members like that i ain't got to worry about myself my mama pray for me my grandmama pray for me well what normally when prayers go up 
help comes down and help will come in the form of listening and help will come in the form of you trying to hear God's voice too and if you're blocking yourself out from the prayers that are going up and coming down and you don't hear it it's like you have no armor yourself he said take upon the whole armor of God so we can pray for our kids all we want and our family members but they have to learn to do it too do you understand that's why when people pray and then they go to a church right they go to a church and they've been praying for a while and then they see that loved one they've been praying for so long they walk through the door they like oh yes you see they had to hear it and they had to answer too and the same thing go for your family members and your friends they got to answer too they got to the prayers you got to see the fruit and the thing is you're not going to see it with everyone so don't be upset don't be mad keep doing what you're doing he said the prayer of a righteous man availeth much right so keep praying even when you're going through things even when you mess up and slip up man i'm not perfect man i, I got anger problems i got all kind of things going on wrong with me <laughs> and i'm sure you do too you understand but stay the path you want those keys no, you want that key. Let me change that. You want that key. You want that open door. But if you give up all the time, you throw in the towel. And I'm not talking about giving up on people. I'm talking about giving up on God. I don't even care if you give up on yourself. But just don't give up on God. Do you understand? Don't stop calling on Him. That's where the devil wins. They give up on God. And when you give up on God, now you go to other sources. You go to other sources for your power. Whether it be man, whether it be idol worship, whether it be other religions, false religions, false doctrine. That's what happens. Rebellion is like the sin of witchcraft. Once you decide to go against God in any form or fashion, guess who you let in? The devil. He comes in and he will dine with you too. But Job stayed the course. And the thing is, God knows your heart. That's why he told Satan, Job is righteous. It's nothing you can do to pluck him out of my hand. It just confirms what Jesus already said. Those who are mine, you can't take from them. You take them. And I have others of this sheepfold that will believe on me through spirit and truth. Will worship me without even seeing me. You understand? I know who my people are. You see, God's telling you today, I know who you are. I know you want to mind. Stay the course. You got to think about it. Many are called, few are chosen. He's calling out to everyone. When do you figure out you're chosen? If you stay the course. If you faint not. Why do you think the Bible keeps saying stuff like that? You think you're going to get that new job and then everything's just going to go smooth and your life is going to smooth out. You might have to go through six jobs. Or you get to that one where things move out. You might have to go through hurricanes and storms. You know, I was sitting on the porch yesterday morning and a branch fell off. And I was like, what in the world? It hit the roof. I almost hit the truck that I drive. Big branch, big oak tree. And I was riding back from home yesterday, from work yesterday. I was like, maybe God trimming the branches. <laughs> you know, I just look at things from a different perspective. You understand? To me, nothing happens for no reason. You understand? Everything happens for a reason. A bird looking at you. A squirrel running across a fence. You're getting bit by ants sometimes. <laughs> Be careful with yourself. Sometimes look down and look up. You know, do you understand what I'm saying? You can learn from anything in your life. <laughs> Just don't give up. I'm telling you, man. People have given up and have lost hope and their purpose in life has never been fulfilled. I love that, that drawing when a dude's hammering through rocks. And one dude, he's like this way, this far from, if he would have hit the rock one more time, he would have broke through and got to the, the treasure. And that's a lot of y'all on the verge. You're right there. But you're ready to quit. <laughs> hey, don't look at me like, like I, I've never been in that moment. <laughs> I have. 
And I'm sure you have. But don't give up. It's a reason to all your suffering. It's a reason to all your pain. It's a reason to all your blessings. It's a reason to all living. You got to look at things from a different perspective. To truly understand God, you got to realize you understand nothing. Job, I understand nothing. <laughs> hmm. Now you know. That's when you think you got to figure it out. You don't. Just figure this out. Keep calling on God. Keep speaking on him. Remember the adversary. He's out there. He's lurking. He's trying his best to thwart you. Stop you from doing what God wants you to do. And he'll send anybody. You know, he'll send anybody. But Job is like, my friends, everybody gone. That's normal. But during those time period, what you need to do is get closer to God. Grow closer to him. You know, a lot of times I want to, yesterday I was just had a battle. I just wanted to just not read. And I still read. I still called on him. I'm like, man, God is good. Because sometimes you just like, man, come on. When is it going to end? Just when you think things are smooth. Along comes Satan. Can I try him a little bit more? Okay. You're going to lose, though. But think about it. I was reading from Isaiah. And he was talking about people who have made covenants with death. <laughs> you know what I hear when I hear that? Sold their soul to the devil. Wow. Some people that give up and give in to who? Satan. You got to understand when you give up on God, you give in to the devil. You're giving him direct entry into your spirit, to your soul. And he'll look after you. Look at, look at the world today. How many evil people are prospering? Doing well. But he said, don't be envious. Don't be envious of the evil. Don't be envious of the wicked. Let them do what they do. You stay doing what you're doing, which is what? Living a righteous life. Did I say living a perfect life? I said living a righteous life. And God to come in and do what, fix whatever areas of your life that need to be fixed. Because you don't want none to be lost for real. None. You know, you look at people read the Bible and be like, man, God just don't care because look at all these people who are going to die. It ain't his fault that people are going to die in their sins. It's their own. And he's just telling you, a lot of people are going to die in their sins. You understand? And oh, God is, God is so angry with us. Yes, he's angry with the wicked. But he's still trying to call them. That's why he sent us out to reach the lost sheep. That's why some people get chance after chance. And everybody gets chance. I ain't going to say some people. Everybody gets chance after chance to do right by God. It's up to them to do it. Let me pause and I will continue.